Hello guys, welcome back to A Simple Low Carb Life. And we are still talking about troubleshooting stalled weight loss. And we're on Module 8, Video 2. And in the first video, we talked about the most common reason that people have stalled weight is that they are creeping up on their carbs. It may be innocent, but when you creep up on the carbs and you're no longer in ketosis, then this diet becomes a calorie counting diet, in essence, and you're no longer in ketosis and you just don't lose weight. So let's say you fix that problem. You've seen the last video and you're now measuring your carbs. Well, you're still hitting the wall and you're not losing weight. So what else can we look at? Well, let's take a look at your protein intake. This is the second most common reason that people have stalled weight. Now remember this easy method to calculate your daily protein amount. Okay, so if you weigh up to 200 pounds or 91 kilos of weight, then you can average 100 grams of protein a day and need to average that. If you're between 200 and 300 pounds or 91 to 136 kilos of weight, then you need to be eating an average of 120 grams of protein a day. And again, this is all divided up into at least three meals and up to five or six if you're eating uh, more frequently. If you weigh 300 to 400 pounds or 136 to 182 kilos of weight, you can go up to 140 grams a day and average that. If you weigh more than 400 pounds, essentially you add 20 grams of protein for every 100 pounds of weight that you um, add or that you, that you weigh. Now, again, if you're exercising vigorously, getting uh, your heart rate up and working up a, a sweat more than 30 minutes a day, you need to add 15 to 20 grams of protein a day to your tally, whatever you weigh, so that you can help to repair your muscle tissue. Now that we've got that down, kind of uh, look at how you're eating and think about this. Are you eating too little or too much protein? They both have their problems. You need to keep protein rather constant. So under eating protein, what happens when you don't eat enough protein? Well, Many diets that are calorie counting, and a lot of other diets, uh, essentially do not factor in keeping your protein at a moderate level. So what happens when you undereat protein? Again, this is a review of what we've gone over before in previous videos and in the guidebook. But if you're not eating enough protein, in any form of weight loss, muscles will waste during weight loss, along with fat, even in the ketogenic diet. So that means if you're not eating enough protein to replace the muscle that is being lost, you'll have a net loss of muscle. And when muscle wastes, that determines your metabolic rate at rest. So if your muscles waste, you will burn less calories at rest, which in essence means you have to eat less in order to lose weight. You're also going to feel fatigued. People often describe it as almost feeling flu-like. Uh, you will literally be starving yourself if you're not eating enough protein. And your weight will stall or alternately you'll gain weight just from under eating protein. So let's not do that. Basically you need to eat the right amount of protein. How about if you think you're doing yourself a favor by eating too much protein? Well, guess what? This is a review again, but guess what? Your excess protein that the body doesn't need Instead of being stored as fat like carbohydrates are, this will simply just turn to glucose or sugar. And then your blood sugar goes up and it gets converted then to fatty acids because now it's sugar and then it's stored. So your blood sugar goes up, weight stalls, and you may even gain weight. And this process is called gluconeogenesis. It happens when we either eat too much protein that the body can't use or if you need some glucose for some very uh, significant activities uh, and you have some glycogen stored in your liver or if you don't have any stored in your liver you need some ready sugar then the body will make glucose essentially out of your muscle by this process gluconeogenesis so we want to avoid gluconeogenesis occurring so again you eat too little too much it's a problem well how do you know how much protein you're eating Again, here we are back to the same mantra. Track your proteins and measure or weigh so that you know how many proteins are actually in what you're eating. 
So are you tracking the amount of protein that you're eating accurately? And are you absolutely sure of your serving sizes? It's so key to do this, and I will say this over and over, but people who do not track and measure do not lose weight regularly. They just don't because you can't have any accurate idea of how many proteins, how many carbs, how many calories, etc. you're actually eating. And if you are under or over on protein, you see the problems that occur. If you are over on your carbohydrate amount, you are no longer in the fat burning state. So really key to track and measure. It sounds like it's a pain in the butt to do, and it, it may be for a lot of people at the beginning, but if you do it regularly, you have a good idea of it. You might not need to actually measure every day unless things start to go awry and you forget what the, the measurements are and then you revisit measuring again. A lot of people can get by with not measuring every day once they're very skilled at this, but that's usually one or two months into your weight loss. And everyone pretty much needs to revisit it uh, at least one week a month because we cannot keep in our mind, most of us can't, exact sizes. I mean, we're just not wired that way. So again, if you're not measuring, then you're guessing. And if you're guessing, you're probably stalling your weight at some point because sizes creep up or we mm. underdo. So we essentially have to really monitor everything about our protein and our carbs in order to stay on track. And again, everyone creeps up on their serving sizes. Uh, usually innocently, because of the ridiculously huge portions of other people's plates, for one. And although this may be innocent, it does impact our weight loss efforts. So remember, in general, if you don't carry a scale around with you, and who would, uh, to measure your food, one ounce of animal protein averages about seven grams of protein. So if you are in a restaurant and they're serving you uh, steak, for example, they usually tell you how many ounces it is and you usually order it that way. So um, most restaurants now are required to put nutritional labels, at least in the United States, in most states. Uh, and so you can get an idea of how much something weighs and then multiply that by seven if it's meat. And then you can uh, get an idea of how much protein uh, you have in that uh, serving. It's not true for every meat, but in general, it is an easy guide to use. And you will still need to know the weight of the protein uh, at some point um, if you're going to count very accurately. But if you're out in a restaurant, you can eyeball it by this method. Uh, if you buy a package of meat at the store or uh, poultry or uh, seafood, it's always going to have the weight on the package. So you can determine basically by dividing it out per serving how many ounces you have in that uh, package. So that's the way to manage that. So again, a reminder, track your protein amount and carbohydrate amount in grams for everything that you eat with the tracking method of your choosing, but do it faithfully, especially for the first month. After that, when you feel like things are creeping up and your weight is stalled for a week, go right back and revisit the tracking. Uh, if you can be diligent and do this daily, you will get the weight off quickly. And I can tell you that through my own experience with patients and clients. Those who do it lose the weight quickly. Those who do not, don't. All right, guys, we have just completed Module 8, Video 2. So how are things going so far for you? Uh, hopefully you've learned some tips that help you to get back on track if your weight is stalled. So take a little break, and then we're going to move on to Video 3.